Hello, I uh, will be presenting on our paper, Domain Adaptive Decision Trees, Implications for Accuracy and Fairness. I'd first like to thank my co-authors as well. Um, so I'm gonna start with an illustrative example of a domain adaptation problem. Often models are trained on data from a source population, which is, does not ultimately reflect the population in which it is deployed. This is the target population. Take, for example, a sports retail store, which uses a model to make product stocking decisions. The model is trained on the source population, which is existing customers and includes few women. Say they identify a new target population, which is everyone living near a new store location. The source population may not reflect the proportion of women in the target population. This could result in failure to add, adequately stock, say, women's soccer shoes. There could even be a feedback loop effect where the source population becomes further and further from the target population as the store has less and less women customers. We propose here a domain adaptive decision trees. We're motivated again by the fact that the source population does not always re represent the target population. Domain adaptation formalizes these differences as distributional differences between domains. We focus here on a specific distributional difference called covariate shift. This is when the relationship between the attributes X and class Y remain the same across domains, but the distribution of the attributes changes. For example, women customers or the source and women non-customers, the target, purchase soccer shoes at a similar rate, but the proportions of women among customers and non-customers is vastly different. And so why decision trees? Well, decision trees we think are still very much alive and well. They're commonly used still in across industry and studied in academia. They've been shown to be com competitive compared to complex models or black box models for use with tabular data. And they're interpretable and more transparent compared to more complex or black box models. And also consider the increase in AI regulation, for example, the EU's AI Act, which places importance on features like interpretability and transparency. So under decision tree learning, the training data is recursively partitioned under split conditions. The split condition, which will be attribute X at threshold value T, chosen at each node, is the one that maximizes information gain. Information gain calculation includes two important probability calculations. That's the probability of each attribute value T at the current node, and the probability of each label value Y at the current node. By default, information gain is calculated based on the training data. The goal of domain adaptive decision trees is for it to approximate the test data. We do that by adjusting those two probability calculations, and we'll show you how. So in domain adaptive decision trees, we adjust the calculation of the probability of each attribute value at the current node. Usually this is calculated based on the training data or source domain. Here we adjust that calculation to include what we know about the probability in the target domain, which may be full or partial information, depending on which attributes we have distribution knowledge about in the target. And so we run experiments of domain adaptive decision trees on the ACS public coverage data set. This is an excerpt from the 2017 US census data. It can be accessed using the folk tables Python package. The prediction task we used was to determine whether a given low income individual is covered by public health coverage. The data set has the same attribute value for every US state. This allows us to treat one state as source domain, and another as target domain. We compared the impact of having various levels of information that is accessible. And so we define the following four knowledge situations. So there's the no target domain knowledge, where we train a regular decision tree in a source state that's different than the target state. There's a full target domain knowledge, where we train a domain adaptive decision tree with knowledge of the distribution of all six attributes of X. Then there's the partial target no domain knowledge, where we train a domain adaptive decision tree with knowledge of the distribution of just two or three of those attributes. And then target to target, meaning that the source and the target domain are the same state and domain adaptive decision trees and regular decision trees will be equivalent. So for the results, we present the relative gain and accuracy, which quantifies the gain of using domain adaptive decision trees over regular decision trees when the source and target states differ. We see the accuracy improves over <clears throat> all source target pairs by 16.6% compared to using a regular decision tree between two different domains. This is when we have knowledge of the distribution of all six attributes. 
This number goes down some if we have knowledge of only two or three attributes. In the graphic to the right, we're plotting the accuracy gain against our measure of the level of covariate shift between the source and the target state. And we can see that we have much greater gains in accuracy when the covariate shift is, is low, and thus the covariate shift assumption holds at least loosely. And so as we are motivated by considering the risk that demographic groups are more impacted by drops in accuracy than others when domain shift occurs, we examined the impact of domain adaptive decision trees for specific groups. We measure this using two common AI fairness measures uh, referred to as demographic parity and equal opportunity. And we look at how does domain adaptive decision tree compare to the standard decision tree under the same post-processing fairness step. And in this case, we focus on the attribute in the data set of sex. And there's more detail on this process in the paper. We again use the relative gain metrics to measure these, mirroring our calculation of relative accuracy. And so we see here that there's an improvement in both of these fairness metrics of about 44% over all source and target pairs with domain adaptive decision trees. We also see that there's much less of a drop in this gain when the covariate shift assumption does not hold. So to conclude, we find that domain adaptive decision trees are an effective method for using existing information about the target domain, which we feel that maybe in practice we may already sometimes have. And they can be effective even when the covariate shift assumption holds very loosely. This especially holds true for uh, fairness metrics. Um, now, we do want to be clear that this method is not intended as a replacement for collecting updated and improved data sets over time. We are proposing that domain adaptive decision trees are one aspect of addressing domain shift, and they could be especially useful, say, prior to a domain shift detection or for addressing and interfering in feedback loops. For future work, we would be really interested to test on more cases, including the effects of this intervention over time. And we would be interested in working with different definitions of outside information and incorporating them into domain adaptive decision trees. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, please feel free to contact us.